so it's half past ten on a Monday morning this is my home where I live it's called the Brunswick Centre that scaffolding there is the same as the scaffolding that's up here those are jackhammers that's my neighbour's balcony she's having work done to her place and all the rest of the people up there are having that work done and that is my bedroom and that's my living room This is my balcony. The cat flap. That's my um my Buddha. That's my Buddha that was on the balcony. And that's Buddha's head. And uh the workman uh decapitated my Buddha on uh, the first day of their putting up the scaffolding and uh, they said they weren't uh, didn't have to give me any compensation because uh, they said that they put a note through my door saying that um, the noise and the vibration was going to be so bad that it was going to knock things off my walls and so I must take everything off my interior and exterior walls I didn't get that note so they're going to give me 40 quid as an act of goodwill to replace this statue which I very much loved and which I can't replace because there's nothing like it anymore. This is just under my balcony. So I've just had three to four years of constant noise while this centre was refurbished by a huge uh, company called Allied London uh, so that they could put in all these fancy shops down there um, I asked to be rehoused because I have health problems and I was refused and this noise, same noise, jackhammers was happening, only it was happening down there they replaced all that concrete slabs and there was two jackhammers down there I've got that on other tapes this is to replace these windows here which I'll show you are all smashed now the reason they're smashed is because the previous builders dropped so much stuff on them from the height while they were doing the, um, the building works, the last building works that's a crack there and that's another crack there and that's just dirt So they're replacing these windows, which apparently do has to be done, and that is actually, you know, for the people who live here. But I don't own this property, and I can never own this property. It is a council property I have no right to buy. So the people over there who benefited, um, who own their homes, some of these people own their homes, 
their property probably went up about a hundred thousand pounds from that refurbishment that's put all these nice shops in I however don't have any profit from this experience except the fact that I have lost even more of my health so for anyone like the sheltered housing tenants here this is what they have to put up with now these people here that's two months of that going on and then I also have to suffer that because I'm right next door this is at the top they're drilling at the top right and I'm actually at the bottom so this is how it sounds while they're at the top and as it comes nearer and nearer me it's going to get louder and louder And then it will come to me and it will be on this wall here and on the floor where they are going to take up these tiles that mine were recently replaced but they don't seem to care about that and they're going to do damp proofing which will hopefully fix the problem of the leaks which led to me having three years of black fungus growing on my walls in the bedroom I had to live in that one room there because uh, the bedroom was so um, was unhealthy, unfit to live in. That was a few years ago now. So this is the fourth year, or is it the fifth year of this noise? I'm again asking to be rehoused. My next door neighbour, this side, who is now gone, during the previous works, told me, that she was going to commit suicide because she couldn't stand the noise anymore she had sleep problems and two weeks later I said don't do it not a good idea two weeks later she did try and commit suicide she took a massive overdose and uh, if it wasn't for the fact that her husband guessed something was wrong and came back and found her she would be dead During the previous works, a guy who lived higher up in the building did kill himself. He was found spread eagled on the floor outside my flat in about January. Don't know how many other people have topped themselves since this has been going on. So we have received no compensation, haven't been rehoused, I have nowhere to go. This is my home and I have to spend a lot of time indoors due to health problems. I've written to my local councillor, haven't had a reply. The uh, Tenants Association has decided not to make a fuss. The guy who runs the Tenants Association is a private owner. So he's one of the people who's made £100,000 out of the previous stuff and no doubt will make a lot more out of this. Well, it won't make, it'll just make it, you know, bring the property up. He lives over there somewhere. So the Tenants Association just rolled over, said, no, no, it's all right, it's all for our own good. We'll just let it happen. We're not going to fight. And they haven't fought. And they're not fighting this one either. After this, there's going to be another year and a half of disruption while they replace the heating system. I have nothing wrong with my heating system. My heating system is fine. It comes through these things in the wall. It's a hot air heating system. And, uh, but they say that other people have problems. And so they're going to put radiators in, which I don't want. I don't like radiators. But I have to have them, whether I like it or not. And that is going to be another year and a half of disruption, noise, and all the rest of it. So I basically haven't had a home since... It's now 2007. It's about November 2007. 
and I think it started in 2003 or was it 2002 I haven't had a home since then this doesn't feel like my home anymore lately I'm waking up crying every day because I just can't face it 8.30 every morning this and then it goes on they've, they've agreed to have a I think they have a quiet hour at lunch maybe a bit longer can't remember but every day I've got this and I've got no escape they've oh no they put in a sanctuary room they put in a, some room higher up in the flat in these flats where you can go and take sanctuary well I don't want to sit in some room with a bunch of people that I don't know I want a home of my own this was supposed to be a home it's not a home it's a building site so two months for this bit then it's either going to come to me or it's going to go over there which will also be extremely noisy if it goes over there first then it will come to me next so that's six months it's two months in each place they're way behind schedule the uh, what is it they call it the tenants liaison something like that the PR guy he's told me that he has no idea when it's going to get to me but when it does get to me that I will have to be around to deal with them because they are going to well the scaffolding is going to block out all my light like these people all over the darkest months of the winter when there isn't much light anyway and then they're going to when they replace these windows they're actually going to build a partition in the end of my wall which means I will get no light whatsoever because this is all going to be the whole thing is going to be partitioned off down to the floor and there will be no light coming in for about a week so I'm going to have to live in the dark meanwhile they will be smashing out those windows all my stuff has to be moved I've got paintings and stuff stored in that corner that's all going to have to be moved and um, and if it all runs to time that will take about a week and then I'll have my scaffolding up for however long and then that will go and then it'll move down I think it's that end we'll get it next so that'll be what eight months and I've already had the noise from up there which has been ten months so what I want to know is how come builders like the people who did all those shops down there how come they can spend millions and millions and millions of pounds to make a killing on putting in William Hill so people can bet and Chocolat, private chocolate company and Starbucks and Superdrug and Baby Gap how come they can spend all that money and yet they can't spend any money on compensating people who are trapped in their homes and these guys they're employed probably by the council and the work they do is work that's necessary apparently but how come people who are stuck here the whole time have to be stuck here why do they have to put up with a year of being tortured every day when they can't get away and they have nowhere to go and they have no money to go anywhere because they're all sick and disabled and elderly and on benefit or pensions. How come that's okay? That's what I want to know. How come that's okay?